For 46 years, high-speed rail meant one thing. Japan's bullet trains, the Shinkansen, undisputed, unbeatable, and faster than anyone dared imagine. But when China's CRH 380A shattered the world record at 486.1 km per hour, that hierarchy exploded overnight. The Shinkansen topped out at 320 km per hour. But China's answer ran at 380. And suddenly, the world's largest nation wasn't just catching up, it was rewriting the rule book. What made this possible? How did China leap from importing trains to outpacing their inventors? And what were the hidden stakes in a technology race no one thought Japan could lose? This is the story behind China's game-changing high-speed gamble. On October 1, 1964, a train pulled out of Tokyo Station and changed the world. The Shinkansen, Japan's bullet train, wasn't just fast. It was a statement. The original Zero Series reached 210 km per hour, a speed that seemed almost unreal for its time. Engineers in crisp uniforms, control rooms lined with analog dials, and crowds gathered along the tracks to witness the future in motion. Over the next five decades, Japan's high-speed rail network expanded, connecting cities with a level of precision and safety that set new global standards. Each generation of Shinkansen pushed the boundaries further. The 500 series, with its streamlined nose, cut through the air at 300 km per hour. The N700 introduced tilting technology for sharper curves and even greater comfort. By the time the E5 series arrived, commercial service had reached 320 km per hour, faster than any other passenger train in the world. But speed was never the only story. In more than 50 years of operation, the Shinkansen has carried billions of passengers without a single fatality from derailment or collision. Railway authorities became legends in the industry. Their methods studied and copied, but never quite matched. For nearly half a century, the Shinkansen stood alone, proof that high-speed rail could be safe, reliable, and transformative. Every nation with dreams of fast trains looked to Japan for answers. And for 46 years, no one else even came close. In 2004, China's Ministry of Railways put forward a high-speed rail tender that changed the rules for global engineering deals. The offer was simple on paper, but radical in practice. Access to a rail market serving over a billion passengers but only for companies willing to share their core technology and manufacturing know-how. This wasn't just about selling trains, it was about opening the blueprints. Kawasaki Heavy Industries, the Japanese giant behind the E2-1000 Shinkansen, faced a dilemma. Their executives weighed the lure of China's vast market against the risk of giving away decades of engineering secrets. Internal debates ran hot. Some managers, focused on growth, saw no other way forward. Others, especially those on the engineering side, warned that transferring detailed designs and manufacturing processes could create a future rival. When the contract was signed in October 2004, it included strict clauses. The first few train sets would ship fully built from Japan, followed by kits assembled in China, and then a rapid handover of production to local factories. Kawasaki agreed to transfer not just the physical trains, but also car body blueprints, bogey designs, and step-by-step -step assembly instructions. Only the most advanced control software and certain diagnostic systems remained off-limits. The expectation, at least from the Japanese side, was that these trains would serve China's domestic network and stay there. But the scale of the deal was unprecedented. 68 car sets, with the majority built in China, and a licensing structure that allowed Chinese engineers to learn every detail from the inside out. For Kawasaki, the hope was that market access would outweigh the risk. For China's railway strategists, this was the doorway to technological mastery. April 2010. Inside CSR Sifang's design lab, Ding Rongjun and his team unveiled a prototype that looked familiar, but hid a new ambition under its skin. While the CRH-2 had borrowed heavily from Japan's E2-1000, the 
The CRH-380A was built to prove China could do more than just assemble imported parts. The engineering team obsessed over every surface, running endless computational fluid dynamics models until the drag coefficient fell below 0.13, a 6.1% drop from the Japanese benchmark. That meant less energy wasted, more speed for the same power. The car body now featured 17% aluminum alloy, a material choice that shaved off weight and boosted structural rigidity. This wasn't just about going faster, it was about handling the relentless vibrations that come with 350 km per hour and above. Inside, the noise level at top speed dropped to just 67 to 69 decibels, quieter than a normal conversation, and a full generation ahead of what the CRH2 could offer. But the real breakthrough came in safety margins. The new bogies and suspension pushed the critical instability speed all the way to 550 km per hour, a threshold no previous passenger train had even tested. For Ding's engineers, every subsystem, from traction motors to wheel dampers, became a proving ground. The result was a train that wasn't just a copy, but a challenge to the idea that high-speed rail innovation could only come from Japan. The prototype was ready, and so was the team. Now, the only thing left was to see how far they could push it. December 3, 2010. In a sealed control room along the Beijing to Shanghai line, a team of engineers stared at a wall of monitors, every eye fixed on the climbing numbers. The CRH3880A, 16 cars long, accelerated past 400 km per hour with barely a shudder. Telemetry streamed in. Vibration, Temperature, every subsystem reporting green. At 486.1 km per hour, the readout confirmed what no other passenger train had achieved. For 34 minutes, the train averaged 388 km per hour over a 220 km stretch. Numbers that left even seasoned rail veterans speechless. Inside the cab, the test crew spoke in clipped, measured tones their voices betraying both tension and awe. Each checkpoint passed without incident. No derailment, no system fault, no warning light. The data was irrefutable. In the control room, the moment the speed counter hit its peak, a wave of relief and celebration swept through the engineers. Some cheered, others simply stared at the screen, stunned by the magnitude of what had just happened. Government observers flagged the results for immediate broadcast. The world's fastest train was now Chinese, and every number, every data point was there for all to see. The CRH380A had not only caught up to the Shinkansen, it had blown past it, rewriting the rules of what high-speed rail could be. Shanghai commuters used to plan their day around a 78-minute train ride to Hangzhou. With the CRH-380A, that journey now takes just 45 minutes. For millions, this wasn't just a number on a timetable. It meant leaving home later, seeing family sooner, and reclaiming entire hours each week. The train's acceleration profile is part of the magic. 0 to 380 km per hour in just 7 minutes. Faster than most cars reach highway speed. Timetables were rewritten with departures every few minutes at peak hours. Train crews adapted to a new rhythm, shorter turnarounds, more frequent stops, and a constant flow of passengers who could now treat intercity travel almost like a subway ride. The effect rippled outward. Business meetings scheduled for the same morning, students commuting between cities, families visiting relatives without a second thought. The world record numbers weren't just for headlines, they became part of daily life, fueling a surge in demand that pushed the network to expand even faster. Over 270 CRH-380A and CRH-380AL train sets have rolled out of Chinese factories, a scale Japanese exporters never matched. This production power wasn't just for domestic pride. When MTR Hong Kong needed high-speed trains for its cross-border express rail link, it turned to CRRC Sifang and ordered nine CRH-380A-derived sets, 
each tailored for comfort and speed, but costing less than comparable Japanese options. The deal, worth nearly 2 billion Hong Kong dollars, gave Hong Kong its first high-speed fleet built outside Japan. In Indonesia, the Jakarta to Bandung high-speed line became a global headline when China outbid Japan's Shinkansen proposal. The Chinese package offered not just lower per kilometer costs, but easier financing and local job creation. Eleven train sets, based on the CRH-380A and its Fuxing successor, now speed between Jakarta and Bandung at up to 350 km per hour. In each case, cost and delivery trumped legacy. For buyers, the numbers made the choice clear. On December 3, 2010, the CRH-380A reached 486.1 km per hour, setting a new world record and marking a turning point in high-speed rail history. For decades, Japan's Shinkansen defined global standards. But China's strategy, beginning with the 2004 technology transfer from Kawasaki, transformed that landscape. The CRH-380A advanced beyond its Japanese roots with improved aerodynamics, noise reduction, and a higher operational speed of 380 km per hour. More than 270 units have since entered service, and Chinese trains now run in Hong Kong and Indonesia, where cost and scale influenced international contracts. While some technical details and negotiation records remain classified, it is clear that China's systematic approach reshaped the industry. Today, the CRH-380A's legacy is seen in the Fuxing series and China's expanding export reach. The shift from Japanese bullet train to Chinese high-speed rail is now a documented fact prompting experts to ask which industry will experience the next transformation.